Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a Ford Transit Custom in for a clutch and jaw mass flywheel. So let's get straight into it. So straight away we put it up on the ramp, get the bonnet open and we take out the airbox. The airbox is normally sitting here. It's now sitting down there. It's very easy to remove. You've just got these two here. So you just pull the airbox back, lift it up, undo the math sensor, undo the pipe that runs down there, the cold air feed, and then just move it out of the way. And then you take the turbo pipe off. So the pipe that comes around here, goes around to the turbo, take that off, undo the little clip for the breather hose there, pull that out of the way so you've got all this access down here. Now, you've got two gear cables. You just get a little pry bar, pop them off, and then there's three bolts over the top of the housing. One, two, and three on the top of the bell housing. Undo those, undo your slave cylinder which is down there. Make sure you clamp off the pipe so you don't lose all the fluid. And then we're gonna move on to the gearbox mount, which is just down there. You've got two bolts on the top, which are 21 mils, and then two bolts to the side, which are 15 mils. Undo those, and now we're ready to go up in the air and start stripping down from underneath. Okay, now the vehicle's up in the air. We have disconnected the starter motor, two 13 mil bolts here, and the wiring that goes all around it, there's a little eight mil holding this wire and a bracket on for this plug so we disconnect everything that's connected to the gearbox all the wiring moves out of the way and the reverse light switch which is just up there just unplug that move the wiring out of the way and then we've taken the drive shafts out so we've got one there one there you've got a center carrier bearing which is two 13 mils here and you just take that little seat part off Pop the drive shafts out. We've drained the oil, so you've got the drain bung just here. We drain the oil out. We've got two liters of nice dirty oil, but we'll be replacing that. The refill for it is just here. We will look up exactly how much it takes to put back in. So your lower arms are all off here and here, 24 mil socket. Um, so next stage is to take this brace bar off and then hopefully start undoing some bell housing bolts. There's some more wiring up the other side, up the back of the gearbox. Take these cables off just here and here. A um, couple more bits of wiring, some more bell housing bolts around the back, and then we can support the engine and lower it down. Get the gearbox mount completely off of the back here, which is gonna be these 15 mil bolts holding it on to going up. And then hopefully in a short while, we should have a clutch out. Wow, now we've removed the engine brace up there. We've undone the gear cables. The gear cables didn't want to come out of the holder. So we just dropped the ramp down and undone the bracket that holds them so that can be moved out of the way rather than damaging the brittle plastic and having to risk doing any more damage. So all we have to do now is the sensor on the top of the engine. That's it. And then we're gonna support the engine, drop the engine mount, and then hopefully come down. Okay, now we've got our pole jack holding up the engine, and we've got our transmission jack just underneath the gearbox ready to come out. We've got all of the bolts undone for the bell housing. As you can see, it's starting to split. And this side, we have the engine mount off. So the two 15s that go up into that engine mount, you undo those first, allows the release of the gearbox to come down. As you lower it down, you just pull these ones out. That's the mount on the floor there. With all the bolts, with all the gearbox bolts, I like to just lay them down in position that they come out. So you've got long ones, short ones, medium ones, so you don't get them all mixed up and get in a faff when you try and go back together. And then over the top here, like I said, gear cables are undone with the bracket so that can just be lifted up so now we're going to lower this down as much as we can to about here and then hopefully pop it off and then set it down and see what we're working with okay so now we're halfway through we've just got the gearbox out which is down there i'm going to show you guys in a minute but if you are interested in the content that i'm putting out then please sub to the channel would be very much appreciated so let's have a look at this clutch so the gearbox is out and it is very heavy and awkward to do on your own but 
what can you do, eh? You can see it's all nice and dusty and dirty. You can see the, the wear on the release bearing there. So we'll clean up all of that so it doesn't go back in my mouth as I'm putting it back up. And then this is the jaw mass and clutch. So it's all out. Put a block of wood in there to hold the engine forward so we can get the diff over this side here. As you can see, uh, always cuts and bruises. But yeah, now that's done, let's whip that off and have a look and see what condition this is in. Okay, so this is the clutch. It's not completely gone by any means, but there is a lot of dirt and debris all around here. Oh, all in there. And as I was undoing it, you could tell it's just coming out. Customers complaining of banging on idle and high clutch, pedal, etc. And then when we look up here, we can see the jaw mass is just, I think the jaw mass is just falling apart. So we get it. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to see the bolts to undo them, but hopefully we can prise that round. Um, you see it's very, very dirty inside. I reckon the inside of the jaw mass is just breaking down. You can see big bits of chunks of the inside of it there. So we have a new one. So we're gonna take that off now. Uh, pop all the new parts on and hopefully get it back together for very soon. Okay, so we're replacing with LUK. Oh yeah, shiny new. So, this is what a new clutch and flywheel looks like. So we'll just set that to one side. Just there. Away. And LUK, mass flywheel. New bolts, always new bolts, talked up to spec. And there we have it. Brand new. Yeah. So, let's get that in. Not forgetting our new slave cylinder. Ooh, very nice. Right, so we're just gonna check these parts against those parts just to make sure they're identical. And then we can start to pop it back in. Okay, so we've got our new flywheel, new bolts, new clutch, all fitted up. There's the old flywheel there. It was a bit of a mission to get it out because it spun over the bolts, so we had to force it back over to get the bolts undone. And our new slave cylinder all set up and ready in there and to line up the clutch we use this little gadget which you've probably seen online they're very cheap but very effective just goes through the clutch you wind this end down and it splays out the end make it all central pop it in do it up and then just take it out so yeah nice and easy for that so now we are ready to pop the gearbox back on so now we've got the gearbox back on you pop it on to the stand here and then you can just raise it up a little tip if you hook the leg in that part there when you get it up to where you need it to go you can actually lower and raise to tilt and twist the box to get it all lined up and as soon as you get it lined up slip it on and because we used our alignment tool that just pops straight in no problem chuck some of the bolts in around the bottom um, make sure they're done up nice and tight and now we can start to put the engine and gearbox back up, get the mount back on, and should be off the ramp fairly soon. Okay, so we're flying back together. Starter motors on, all wiring on, plugged in, reverse sensor plugged in, the bracket that holds the uh, pipe for the slave cylinders in. We've got our drive shafts back in. We've got our lower mount back on, other drive shaft back in. We've got the bracket for the center bearing back in all of the covers up the top are back in and over the top there we've just got to do up the bracket for the gear cables we've rooted all of our wiring properly plugged in the crank sensor there and so now we are going to fill up the gearbox and we are going to be using some castrol transmax manual 75w recommended um, this stuff is about 30 pound a litre and it takes 2.15 litres. 
So we're gonna just pop that in now before we forget. And then um, we can lower it down. The customer has asked, so I've got a new wishbone on whilst I've got it up on the ramp, which is always handy. So I'll just slap that on and then we'll come down and start her up. So now we're all back together. We've got our pressure bleeder on the system and we have just bled out the clutch uh, down there. So got all the air out the system. Wheels are back on, we've changed that lower arm as well. Just got to torque up the wheels, but now we're just gonna go see if we've got a good pedal or not. Uh, will it stick to the floor? Oh, lovely. So let's just start her up. So she starts. Just gonna pop her in reverse. Lovely. That clutch feels really nice. Clutch pedal feels good. So yeah. So that's it guys, that's a uh, clutch on a Transit Custom. That is all done, all back together, working absolutely perfect. But I do have a question for you guys. I use a work light like this. Uh, the magnet always falls out, don't matter how much you glue it back in or whatnot. What work light could I get that will be good and very useful for what I do? Anyone got any suggestions, please leave your thoughts and comments down below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.